Yes, hello, dears. Uh, we're very happy to have the opportunity to work with you today. We are the Ninth Dimensional Pleiadian Collective. Uh, we are a group of about 2,500 beings, if you want to think of us as individual entities. Uh, and um, uh, we are presenting ourselves as one persona, if it makes it easier to, for you to think of us as one being, then go right ahead. Uh, we know it's still a bit of a stretch for you all uh, to think of a group working together, but that's where you're headed, yourselves, as a, a group consciousness working um, in tandem rather than as unique individuals. So uh, we are here uh, to assist you on your journey. All right, you may be wondering who exactly are these Pleiadians and why in the world are they helping us? Well, we are guardians for this uh, system. All right, Alcyon, which is our central sun, just as Helios is your central sun, um, is the central sun for the uh, galaxy. All right, so your solar system actually revolves around Alcyon. And it has been our task and our pleasure to assist you over the uh, many, many thousands and thousands of years uh, on your spiritual path, all right? We're assisting you, making sure that other beings aren't interfering to such an extent that it is detrimental to your growth and your development. Uh, and we are here to lend you a hand. So many of you resonate with our star system, and uh, that's because you spent a lot of time in that system. So uh, as we go this evening, uh, we're going to talk, um, as Wendy mentioned, not in a linear fashion, but we're going to be hopping around just a little bit uh, to keep you on your toes. So feel free to jot down any questions that you might have and uh, save them here in a bit. We're going to stop, take a little break. We'll talk a little bit more, and then you'll have an opportunity to ask questions. So we don't want to lose you. Uh, if we leave you far behind, feel free to interrupt us, all right? So. Um, it's also important for you to know that you're going to get all the information that you require uh, subconsciously. All right, so don't worry if, if it doesn't all make sense. It's all getting through because, as Wendy mentioned, we are working with you energetically. So uh, while we say to you it is a nice day outside, uh, we're depositing a little energetic packet. All right, so in, within that packet, it says it's a nice day. It's 70 degrees. It's sunny. There's a light breeze. The birds are chirping, and the rose bush that you're next to is quite fragrant. All right, so there's a lot more information going on that we're depositing on a subconscious level. And as you are sleeping and as you're going over the next several weeks, some of that is going to begin to unfold for you. So uh, we'll be doing that with your permission, of course, because you're living in a free will zone. And we'll be talking about free will zones here shortly. But that means that uh, you, know, you have choice. So if you don't want us to work with you, uh, then we will respect your wishes. All right, so uh, off we go. Um, the first thing we want to talk about is about the dimension of duality in which you exist. All right, so you are living in a very special sector of the universe in which you've got a very dense planet uh, engaged in duality. All right, you've got light, dark, positive, negative, male, female. You cannot have one without the other, but they are both the same side, uh, they're both two sides of the same coin, all right? And uh, within third dimensional uh, existence, that duality is quite dense, all right? Um, and the expression of it is far more extreme than it is in the higher dimensions, all right? So let us back up here just a bit. Um, the third dimension is tremendously special because you are focusing your energy so intently on one point, and that is your reality, that you don't see all the other probable realities that are going along at the same time. All right, So you can see one reality from start to finish. So you're not seeing what's coming over the next hill. Right? It's a bit like riding on a roller coaster and you're going up and you don't see the drop that's coming. All right, And that's very special. And while it seems a bit scary to you now as you are going on that roller coaster ride because you don't know what's going to happen, uh, as soon as you get off, you go through the ride once, uh, you think it was a really good time and you want to get right back on the ride. All right, so that's what happens when you go through incarnational cycles. While it's difficult the first time not knowing what's happening, uh, when you see uh, the end result 
and the entire experience, you want to get right back on the ride. So in the third dimension, you have the ability to see from start to finish, and that gives you the illusion of linear time. But we tell you from a multi-dimensional perspective that past, present, and future are one. All right, they're all going on at the same time. And we know that's a bit to wrap your mind around, uh, but uh, it is true nonetheless. So what you imagine to be a past life is actually happening right now. All right, it's not past, it's concurrent with this one. But because you are uh, seeing it through that linear timeline, uh, you are associating a date with it. Time is nothing but uh, a marker. So if you think of each experience as a book in the library, time is like the Dewey Decimal System. All right? it, it, it tells you exactly where you need to go to have the experience, and you can locate it. All right? But it may be a different shelf, or it may be a different section of the bookstore that you're in. So, uh, it is very special here in the third dimension. In, when you get up into the fourth dimension, uh, you're having the same duality, all right, but where you've once had a linear line, all right, if you think of it as a teeter totter, you've got light and dark on opposite ends that go back and forth. In the fourth dimension, it's a circle, all right, and on one side you've got light, and on the other side you've got dark, but they're always connected, all right. And the distance between is not nearly as far, all right? Because the denser you go into physical uh, existence, the more dramatic the duality becomes, all right? So uh, in addition to having this very dense uh, duality, uh, Earth is a very, very special planet for a number of reasons. And one of those is because um, it is seeded with genetic material from thousands and thousands and thousands of planets. All right, from the marine life that you have yet to discover to your plants and animals and your insect worlds, uh, you have all of this genetic material that was donated. Uh, to this planet as an experiment. And along with this genetic material comes encapsulated in the energetic body of that DNA or that um, being that is created, that essence that is created, is all of the history and all of the experience of that world. All right, so let us say that again. So within all of the genetic material that was donated is the history and the experience, the emotional experience of the beings from those worlds. So when you get all that here on this planet, that means that the emotional range that you experience is tremendously vast. Because you've got all of these other programs running, all of this history. It's very, very rich with experience. And so that makes the highs extremely high and the lows extremely low. All right? And that can make it a very difficult planet for many beings to incarnate to. So we would like to give you our uh, acknowledgement, all right, to g give you our gratitude for having the opportunity to work with you because you really are the masters. All right, oftentimes you look to us uh, thinking that we are the ones who have all of the answers. You know, you think that we're up higher than you, but in truth, the reality is the best of the best got to come down to the game, all right? And uh, it takes a very special being to incarnate to this planet, especially at this time. And you have solutions for every problem that you're creating for yourselves, all right? You've already got it. You've just forgotten. And we have, you know, we've got the cheat sheet, all right? So we can tell you um, that you really are the ones with all the power because you're down here and you are experiencing it firsthand. So what is happening at, the, on, uh, at this time on the planet is that it is moving from the third into the fourth and eventually into the fifth dimension. And it has never happened before where a planet has transited with conscious beings on it before. A planet has ascended before, or a uh, group of beings has ascended, but never the two together where the entire planet is going. And uh, it is very special because it's never happened. We don't know how it's going to play out. All right, we can look at probable timelines, but that really uh, is just a rough guess. 
and you are the ones who are down here writing the books on how it's done. All right. So we want to make you very aware that we feel that you are, you know, the beings of light. All right. You are the ones who are the true masters. And it's very important to us that you understand that, that you don't give your power away. And um, we're going to talk a bit about uh, free will zones, and we're going to talk a bit about the Anunnaki, and there's a lot of ground to cover. But um, as we go tonight, we want to make sure that you understand that you're living in a free will zone. All right? And what does that mean exactly? It means there are no victims. It means absolutely every one of you is a willing participant in every action that occurs. All right, so you're all in the driver's seat. And you may wonder how in the world could I or would I have created such a unpleasant experience for myself. All right, say you're in a bit of a fender bender or you put yourself in financial ruin or whatever it is, you are the one who has created that event. Um, because when you begin to look at reality as a game, or as an illusion, because that is what it is, it makes it a bit more fun to play. All right? When you understand the mechanics of the universe and what's really going on, uh, then it makes life a lot easier and um, you can create what it, what it is you want. So, if you... Um, can stop for just one moment. We would like for you to find an image, all right, of an animal or a place that immediately puts a smile on your face and let us know when you've got it. All right, have you all got an image? Such a quiet group. Yes? yes. All right, very good. Um, take note of how you're feeling in your body. All right. Do you feel lighthearted? Do you feel warm? Do you feel like you're buzzing? Do you feel tingly? What's really going on? All right. Take notice. This is how you should be feeling all the time. Now, how often do you feel this way? Probably not very often. Uh, as you're driving in your car and you're upset, uh, you know, um, you're not feeling this way. You're dropping out of your frequency range. Uh, it's all about energy. And when you are feeling lighthearted and warm, like you are when you're finding this image, you are tapping into source energy. And you can call it what you want, whether you want to call it universal energy, God energy, whatever definition you like, it is unconditional love. All right? And it's like plugging into the outlet in the wall. And when you begin to to tap into the lower frequencies, when you begin to worry about something, when you start to get stressed out, when, when the fear buttons are pushed, you drop out of that frequency range and you unplug from the outlet in the wall. And then you're forced to run on backup power. All right? And your, ba your backup power is a limited lifetime. All right? So you've got to find these frequencies again and plug back into the wall. So, um, while you're going through your day, any time that you're feeling tired or when you're feeling stressed out, in the car is a very good time to find this image. All you have to do is think of this um, image that you found before and it will plug you right back into universal energy and it will completely alter your energetic field. So if you're having a problem, all right, that you can't find a solution to, Try doing this exercise and you will open back up to the higher frequencies. You'll open back up to your source of inspiration and suddenly all of the information will start to flow. All right, so it's a good way to get a quick pick-me-up and also to allow some creative juices to get moving. All right, so when we talk about creating your own reality, uh, there are lots of beings out here who are talking about uh, the laws of attraction and we're very happy to see that it has reached mass consciousness and um, we will put it simply your thoughts create form your emotional states vibrate it into being all right so um, it's important that you understand this concept uh, because 
It is how reality is created. And your history has been rewritten so that you don't understand this, that you don't know this. All right? There are beings who are working um, at manipulating humanity, all right? keeping them locked in fear, and we'll talk about that here in a moment, um, so that they forget that they have the ability to create their own reality, that reality isn't just impressed upon them. All right? You're in the driver's seat. So when you want to create something, and let's use the example of a vacation, um, it's very easy for everyone to see themselves in a hammock on the beach with a nice beverage in their hand and, you know, maybe a nice book. All right, but how are you feeling about it? All right, so if you think of that image uh, as being a movie and you put it on pause, all right, that's the form, is that image, that's how it's going to take form. Uh, how do you feel? All right, are you feeling that you'd really like a vacation, but then you're wondering how in the world am I going to get away? Uh, I'm going to have a, a stack of bills to come back to. My work is going to pile up. And as you start working uh, with those thoughts and those emotions, it drops you out of that frequency range. So if you were to uh, take the pause button off and it starts to play itself out, well, what happens is that you come back and there's lots more work, there's lots more stress, and uh, you don't have a very nice vacation. All right, but if you put it on pause, and then how you're feeling about that image that you've created is that you're very excited because you get to find, um, uh, you get to see a very beautiful place on the planet that you've never been to before. You get to have some wonderful food and great company and get to relax and, and do some of the things that you've been wanting to do, like read a book, write some letters to friends, whatever it is, but you're very excited. All right, so you've got that warm, tingly feeling going on again that creates a very different reality. What that creates is a very nice vacation for you. All right, so can you all see the difference? It's that emotional state that vibrates it into being, and it's paramount that you understand this. So um, if you want another way to think about it, um, see yourself standing on the roof of a building. And you're throwing out a boomerang, which is your order to the universe of what you would like to create. All right? And it's not your responsibility to figure out how, to, how or why you're going to get it. All you have to do is put it out there. And the universe is going to uh, fill the order and bring it back. And if you are staying in that same frequency range, if you're feeling uplifted and in the same place you were when you thought about creating it, then you're standing there on the roof to receive the boomerang back. But if you throw out the boomerang and then you start to worry, how in the world is this going to manifest? I can't imagine how. Uh, and I don't know as I really deserve it. What happens is when you start going down in frequency, it's like going down a couple floors. All right? And you're no longer standing on the roof to receive your order. You're not there for it. All right? So that's why things don't come back. So that's just a bit of information on, on the laws of attraction and understanding that you create your own reality. The next universal law that's going to start to come forward for humanity is understanding that you're holographic in nature. All right. So what happens to the microcosm happens to the macrocosm. What happens in one cell of your body happens to every cell in your body. What happens to one molecule on this planet happens to every molecule in the universe. So that is why at this time there are so many beings who are coming through, bringing through information, all right, from different star systems, different realms, uh, you know, the angelic realms, and lots and lots of extraterrestrials. Because what happens here on this planet is going to impact the entire universe. And that's a big one to wrap your head around. And for those beings who have donated their genetic material, this shift in consciousness is going to be quite profound. All right, because it's a bit like um, being able to watch a live event. You're not participating, but you're able to watch it as opposed to reading about it or watching a film. All right, so these beings have a front row seat. And so the lessons that you're learning right now when you are processing all of your stuff, all right, 
uh, of how to overcome um, issues of diversity. All right, how to learn to love unconditionally. All the different ways that you find to work through all of these subtle variations of emotions, they are able it, they are able to then incorporate themselves because you're holographic in nature. So uh, if you think of it as a grain of sand, it's as small as a grain of sand, the entire experience of this planet, and it is then inserted uh, into the energetic field of every being on another planet. All right, so the information is encoded then in their genetic material. All right, so they have access to uh, the answers of how it was done because you did it here. So as they're working through their own lives and issues, and there is a resonant frequency that is in harmony with the one that was planted within that seed, it opens the book for them. All right? So you're living in a free will zone. It's an open system. But there are also closed systems within this universe. And that means that there isn't free will. All right? There are some sectors which are a bit different. And uh, so when you incarnate... You, uh, you know, you create a blueprint of what you want your life to be like, all right? Um, and while it's good on paper, you get down here and you realize it's not really working, all right? <laughs> it was good in theory, but not in practical application. So you've made contracts with other beings. You know, you said, all right, I'd like to catch up with you uh, so we can have this experience together. But if I'm running late, you know, that's all right. You go meet up with so-and-so, and I'll catch up with this person down the line so we can still have that experience. All right? So you've worked it out. You've made contracts, and you've made lots and lots of backup plans. And as you go, you are writing and rewriting your contracts. All right? So this is all going on energetically by your oversouls. There are aspects of yourself which are orchestrating all of those other lifetimes, all those fractured parts of yourselves. It's a bit like the puppet master, all right? Making sure that you're getting all the experiences that you want to have. And um, as we said, if you don't like it here, you can change it because you're living in a free will zone. But there are other systems that exist in which they create a blueprint for the life and then they go down and they live it and that's it. All right, and they go through cycles. And some of the cycles are getting very stagnant. So as you are moving from the third into the fourth and then eventually the fifth dimension, uh, what will happen is those lessons will get downloaded to those closed systems. All right, it will become available and that will open up brand new opportunities for them as well. So we want you to understand what tremendous impact this has on the entire universe. All right, and here you think you are just simple little beings that have no power. And that's why we want to impress upon you the fact that you really are the masters down here. So, um, we're going to shift gears entirely, and we're going to tell you a little story about your Earth history. All right? Um, we're going to take you back um, briefly to Lemuria. All right, many of the beings who were on Lemuria uh, were seeded from Lyra. All right, and uh, it was a system in which they knew that they were uh, connected with all of reality, uh, connected with other star systems, connected with other dimensions, and they understood that they were multi dimensional beings here, all right, playing in density. And then you had. Uh, a time where the Lemurians decided that they had accomplished all that they really wanted to, all right? And many of them went back to Lyra. And those who decided that they wanted to stay within physical reality went to Atlantis, all right? And then you have three grand civilizations within Atlantis. And um, many of you, and we will tell you all of you in this room, uh, were there for that last lifetime. All right, for the downfall of that civilization. And during that last lifetime in Atlantis, um, your priests and priestesses uh, were very aware that you were uh, connected with beings in other realms and other dimensions. Now, the citizens of Atlantis knew this connection existed, but they themselves did not connect. All right, so this was left to the priest caste. And uh, at the time, 
the beings in Atlantis were working uh, with beings on Mars, uh, named the Anunnaki, who had a colony there on Mars. Now, the Anunnaki were not originally from Mars. They were from the Syrian star system, all right? Their planet uh, was located there. And they had destroyed uh, the natural resources. They had over-harvested their natural resources from their planet. And so they began to step out into the galaxy, all right, throughout several different star systems in search of raw materials and ways of continuing their own existence. So uh, the Anunnaki have spent a lot of time in the Syrian star system. They have very strong roots there, and they've got control, uh, a grip on uh, many of the worlds, all right, where they have been manipulating the population and basically enslaving them without or with their knowledge, either way. And then, um, you know, they made their way towards uh, the Helian system. The Helios is your sun, right? And um, they also have a base currently on Venus, all right? So that's a bit of an outpost for them at the moment. So during this time, uh, the uh, Anunnaki were interested in Earth, all right? They saw the rich natural resources and they wanted to access it. But knowing full well that uh, the Atlanteans had a great deal of power and were on the same par energetically, technologically with them, uh, that they dare not uh, harness to the extent that they would wanted to uh, some of the natural resources. So seeing an opportunity to assist with the downfall of Atlantis, they gave some of the priest caste a bit of bad advice, all right? So, you know, they were headed pretty much on their own to downfall and destruction, but it's a bit like giving someone an extra shove, all right? So they saw an opportunity and they took it. And we're telling you this because it is within your cellular memory, your experience, your personal experience with the Anunnaki, all right, on a very real tangible level. So after the downfall of Atlantis, the Anunnaki had the opportunity to come in and do exactly what they wanted. All right, And um, they had the opportunity also to rewrite your history because with the Atlanteans gone or scrambling, because your Atlanteans went uh, in 12 different directions, you know, they sent out uh, little tribes or little groups, little clans to preserve history in your crystalline uh, structures. Um, with this uh, downfall, they had the opportunity to rewrite history to their benefit. All right. So if you forget that you're multidimensional, they can alter your genetic structure, which they have done. They have changed it from 12 strands of DNA down to two. All right. And you're rebuilding that. And um, just as an aside, because we see the wheels turning in your heads, uh, you're only going to rebuild three physically. The rest are going to be energetically because you're not going to need your physical body. So if you have questions, uh, feel free to ask us later. We see lots of wheels turning right now. So they altered your genetic material, all right? Um, and they rewrote history for you. Uh, they created an environment where you were separate, all right? You didn't know your power. And the, the idea here was to generate lots and lots of fear to keep you controlled. Now, the Anunnaki are very cerebral beings. Right? They themselves have lost a lot of their ability to tap into the higher frequencies of emotion. Right? So they're very uh, base-oriented. So they're very um, greed-oriented, right? warring, anger, frustration, manipulation, all of those lower emotions. They're very good at experiencing, but love, joy, home, family, love, all of those they are removed from. And they have been removed from those higher frequencies for a very, very long time. So they put these structures in place, all right? A lot of your religious doctrine, uh, documents uh, have been manipulated, all right? So if you're talking about your Bible or you're talking about uh, any of the other religious doctrines, 
there is just enough truth in there to keep you interested, uh, but not to keep you educated. All right. So if someone were to tell you a bold lie, you would know that it was a lie. But if they're crafty and they sprinkle it with bits of truth, well, the truth are going to resonate with you, so it's hard to tell where the lie is. All right? And that is the case with your religion. But your religion was created to um, keep you uh, in a pocket of fear, All right? that you are sinful, that you are uh, separate from God, All right? and that you've got to go through another being to connect. All right? So it's all part of that disconnection. You know, they disconnect your DNA and they disconnect you emotionally. And um, what happens when they generate a lot of fear is that they are able to harness that energy and um, open up portals. All right. So just as you are able to do the exercise that we gave you before, where you're feeling light and love, you um, reconnect with unconditional love and source energy they do not have the ability to open this portal just as you have within your own body. Because what you do when you, when you open all of your centers and reconnect is that you create a, a little vortex within your body, an energetic portal. And it takes a lot of energy to do that. And when you open to source energy, it's like turning the valve all the way open. So when they take lots of bits and pieces of the fear energy and group them all together, they get pretty close with, you know, if you think of it as a wide band of energy, all right, they band it all together, and then they can create portals themselves, all right? And this allows them to connect with other star systems. It allows them to communicate with other dimensions, all right? They understand the scientific means. So the ultimate goal here is to utilize your natural resources and to feed off of the emotions in order to reconnect with the other star systems in which they have um, have locations, which they have headquarters. All right. And so this game has been going on for thousands and thousands of years. So they are manipulating your government. They are manipulating events. So if we talk about 9-11, that was a manipulated event. All right. And um, as the Anunnaki see things transpiring here, as you are moving closer and closer to 2012, they're getting a bit nervous because they see you all waking up. So they are trying to create grand events that will all deaden you. They are also doing things on an energetic level, all right? They have put grids around the planet, which we have managed to work through, and you as well, as you have opened up your energetic centers, and you step outside of that frequency range, you go higher, all right, um, you're phasing out of it, and you can connect to us, all right, and we've broken through all of that. Um, but there are those who are still sleeping, and we always say, you know, it's a bit like hitting the snooze alarm, they don't want to wake up, and you've been up for hours, all right, and um, as we move closer to 2012 here, um, you're going to find that you're, you know, you're doing a lot of the hard work right now. You're clearing out your own energetic fields and, you know, you're really changing your thought patterns and it's not easy when everything else is saying just the opposite. All right. So it's challenging you in that way. So it's a bit like uh, we always equate it with walking through the jungle and you're hacking your way up. All right. And you're the first person. All right. You're doing all, all the hard work while everyone else is just easily walking up the path. All right. So when we get closer to 2012 here, you will have been up for several hours. You will have been able to sit down at the table, have a nice cup of coffee and a nice breakfast, and you're reading your paper, all right? While they, on the other hand, have someone coming in, flipping on the light and yanking them out of bed, right? It's a bit disoriented, disorienting for them. So, you know, you're all calm and peaceful and, and rejuvenated, and they're a little frantic. So that's how it's going to be as we go. So don't worry, you're going to have time to rest on the other side because you're clearing out energy now. You're taking with you from the third dimension uh, the energetic body or the energetic template that forms your physical body with you. All right? That's never been done before with the planet. So anything that hasn't been cleared out of your energetic field, any of those thought forms 
that uh, you're hanging on to that are third dimensional concepts, you're going to take them into the fourth dimension and have to clear them out there. All right, which is going to be a lot more intense because it is immediate manifestation. All right, it's very heightened. So uh, if you want to think of it as being far more dramatic, a clearing, that's one way to do so. So everybody who's sleeping is going to have to do all this very dramatic clearing at the end while you've been clearing it out as you're going and it's just a nice little wash for you. All right, so we want you to know that, you know, while you're working very hard, the payoff will be a little farther down the line. <coughs> so, back to the Anunnaki. Uh, so they are manipulating events. <coughs> and as they manipulate events, uh, uh, and we're talking about 9-11, uh, they have a tendency to walk a very fine line, all right? While they are creating a lot of fear, they are also having to present quite a bit of truth to keep you all still buying into their product and that runs the risk of waking you up. All right, so if you think about 9-11, while it generated a lot of fear in people, it also created a lot of compassion. And when that happened, it actually created a brand new grid of compassion around the planet. You had over 144,000 of you thinking the same thought at the same time. All right, so that didn't really work out exactly as they had planned. While it worked on one level, it didn't work on another. All right? Uh, so you're talking about your wars. All right, that's another manipulated event. It creates a lot of fear. Uh, and you've got a lot of different religious sects fighting each other. All right, and that's all programmed in. All right, so it's creating lots of fear in the planet. And um, the latest one is global warming. All right, and... Um, it's very important that you understand global warming is not a man-made event. Right? It is part of the natural ascension process. But the Anunnaki would not dare tell you that something is going on with the planet. All right? They don't want you to know. They are desperately trying to keep this from happening. But we'll tell you, uh, from our perspective of probable realities, it's a done deal. All right? So it's just a matter of who's, who all is going. All right? the Earth will transit in this probable reality into the fourth dimension. So it's, it's a bit of a futile effort for them. All right? They're still trying to maintain their sense of being. So when we talk about global warming, um, it's really important for you to know that, one, you're not creating it. Uh, the sun is sending you signals that it is time to move into a new dimension. All right. So if you think of yourself as a paperback book, all of your emotional experiences from all of your lifetimes are stored in you, in your energetic field. All of your experiences here on Earth are stored in the planet itself. All right. It's like a, a branch library. Then your sun, Helios, would be the main library. So all of the planets in the solar system, all of the beings who live upon all of those planets and all the dimensions, all that information is stored in the sun. Then the sun sends all of its records to Alcyon, the central sun for the galaxy. And all of the planets, all of the suns in the galaxy send all that information to Alcyon. So it's all stored there and you can think of it as your library of Congress. So the sun knows exactly what's going on and it's sending you cues energetically that it's time to move forward. And so to send that, it's, it's got a lot of activity going on. It's got a lot of extrasolar flares, more flares, more heat, higher temperatures. All right, so that's just one of the things that's creating the uh, extra heat. One of the other things that's creating it is that the, the frequency of the Earth herself has been altering for the last 25 years. All right? And um, as the frequency ranges go up, and as frequencies get higher, they get shorter, they get hotter. All right, so uh, just with the increased frequency of the planet, the actual temperature alters slightly. All right, and your scientists haven't figured this out completely yet. They don't know how to, to do it mathematically, but they're getting there. All right, so the Anunnaki understand this. But they are also playing a card that is pushing your buttons and your memory of Atlantis and your destruction of that society. 
right? So if they tell you you're killing the planet, it's pushing that button in that memory where you destroy your civilization. And it pushes all that fear, all right? So that generates a lot more fear and you're not conscious of it. It's happening on a subconscious level for you. All right, so they're doing that. And if you are killing your planet, you're not in control of your planet, which means you're not in control of your food. If you're not in control of your food, you can't be in control of your body. And if you're not in control of your body, then then you have control of nothing. All right, so basically, they've got you thinking that you have no control, that you're not creating your reality for yourself. And we know that you as individuals have free will and you create your own realities. There are no victims, only willing participants. So subconsciously, you're agreeing to this, all right? to either buy into this or not. So as we tell you all of this, we don't want you to fear the Anunnaki, all right? We don't want you to be angry with them. It is not our uh, intention to instill fear, but what we want you to understand is the game that's being played, all right? So that you can then take your toys and play in another sandbox, all right? If you think of it a bit as having a switchboard, all right? an all-operator switchboard with mass consciousness and all the outlets of all the thought forms and being able to unplug. And what's going to start to happen is that you're going to start plugging in to new outlets that are in the fourth dimension. All right? So it's very important that the Anunnaki are doing this because, as we said, some people are sleeping until the very last moment. And it takes a very dramatic event to wake them up, all right? It's like having to turn that volume on the alarm all the way up before they hear it. And when you have dramatic events like uh, 9-11, that's what it takes to wake people, all right? So they are serving their purpose in duality, all right? And the Anunnaki are a very important part of this ascension process. They are playing the role of the darkest of dark, and you are the lightest of light, all right? You cannot have one without the other. And if you still have difficulty in appreciating the job that they're doing, think of it this way. These are beings who have not known love for a very, very long time. Think about what your life would be like without love. It would be very lonely and very cold, all right? So as you see things going on, as you see your president, uh, making choices which seem completely irrational or that um, are very upsetting to you, uh, imagine the role that he has donned, all right? Here is a being who, who is having all of this anger, all of this resentment, all of this hatred aimed at him, all right? So as a being who has come into this game and taken on all of this responsibility to shoulder all of this anger, all right, that takes a very special being to say um, that they are willing to play that role for everyone else. So start to think of it that way, and it makes it a little easier for you to find some compassion there if you're thinking on the higher level. Um, and if you can start to think of the fact that he's playing his role, thank him for playing the role, all right? If you can't thank him for the choices that he's making, at least you can thank him for the role that he's playing. All right, and that goes for all the other things that you see that are going on that you're not happy with. All right, give gratitude for the fact that they are showing you the opposite. Because what you focus on is what you get. All right, so if you're thinking uh, that you don't want war, your focus is on war, so you get more war. All right, if you're thinking that you don't want uh, more strife, or that you, uh, your economy is going to collapse, then that's what you're going to get, all right? So as we tell you this also, we want you to know that you're creating your own reality, and it may not be the same reality as the person sitting next to you, all right? And that has to do with your frequency ranges. So if your frequency is high enough, and you're in a different resonance, then the laws of attraction say, like attracts like, then you're not going to notice all these other things that are going on that aren't so pleasant, all right? So if you talk about your economy collapsing, and we'll tell you that it is likely that it will take a big dip here shortly, 
it doesn't mean that you have to suffer financially. All right, because in your reality, in your emotional field, what you're feeling is that you are a, a being of light. You are in in uh, in control of your own reality, and what is happening in your reality is that you have a lot of abundance. Right, you've got a lot of financial freedom. So if the dollar drops, what will happen is that you'll have more dollars. All right, to make up for it. All right or that you'll have additional sources of income, or you'll be working in another currency. All right, so whatever it is, the universe will support you with that. All right, you're not having to buy in to all of these other things that are going on around you. So uh, what will happen is that you will not turn on the television that day to hear about the uh, horrible events, all right? Or uh, you know, you'll walk past the person on the street who's got all the gossip, that's going to bring you down, your frequency is at another level. All right, so that's why it's very important for you to understand the laws of attraction. And as we said, there are lots of beings out there talking about it. So if you haven't been exposed to it before tonight, we highly suggest that you do a little research and start reading up and understanding it. All right, because when you understand the laws of attraction, you can really work through anything, whether you want more uh, abundance, whether you want greater health, whether you want to connect to the other realms, whether you want celestial information, it doesn't matter, it's the laws of attraction. And the one very special thing about this reality is that in this dense environment, uh, you are not in touch with what's going on on an emotional level, so you have created this wonderful program for yourselves in which you have it reflected back to you by your physical reality. All right, so you can't see what's happening invisibly on the emotional, but absolutely every event that's occurring is telling you what's going on in your physical reality. Right? It's telling you what's going on emotionally. So if you are innocently, or so you think, sitting at a table minding your own business, reading a book, and someone comes up to you and starts yelling at you about something, and you think, what in the world could I possibly have done to, uh, to warrant such an attack? Well, you've got a defense in your field. And that person has made a contract with you to point it out. All right, so if you're feeling defensive about, um, or if you're feeling insecure about yourself, they're going to come up and tell you that they don't like your outfit. All right, you've created that event, even though you weren't conscious of it. So that's telling you that you've got some issues about self-love to look at. All right, and it happens with absolutely everything that you encounter, without exception. It's a wonderful game you've created for yourself. It's quite elaborate. And dimensions really are structured as games. All right? If you think of it as, you know, one game for football, one for basketball, one for soccer, they're all different. And dimensions are structured that way. So when you get into the fourth dimension, it's more of a transitory zone. All right? It's, it's allowing beings to uh, once again enter multidimensional existence. Because in the density, it is very hard to be here, and when you come out of it, um, you need a little time to readjust if you're coming from a, uh, another dimension, all right, when you're coming from the third or from the second as an elemental back up. So um, it's a bit of a transitory zone until you get to the fifth, uh, which is immediate manifestation and understanding that you are a multi-dimensional being and that you're able to stand in one spot and to see po possibilities, all right? So if I make choice A, this is what will happen, choice B, choice C, choice D, and how it will impact each and every person. And that's a lot for you to think about. It's a bit like having a, you know, a preview, a movie trailer, being able to watch it. And then you get to decide which one looks interesting and which one you actually want to have that experience of. And when you get to the fourth dimension, um, it is a bit like um, it's a bit like here. However, your extremes aren't quite as extreme, and there is no sense of lack. All right. So you're all asking, what is the fourth dimension really going to be like on a practical level? And it's um, about doing things that you want to do because you you enjoy it. All right. Having jobs, making a contribution because it's fun. All right, not because you've got to do it to make money. All right, so there is no sense of lack, and you start working as a group consciousness. 
Right. So while we can tell you some things here and now, it's not possible for us to tell you everything because what's happening is you're moving from a head-centered reality into a heart-centered one. All right. The filter of the mind is not fine enough to retain all the information about the fourth dimension. So as you start working here, as you start um, moving closer to the fourth dimension, some of you are going to start going to the fourth and coming back with information. All right? And that information can't be held in the head. So uh, it's really going to be about how you're feeling. Right? As we told you before, we're giving you the words right here and now but there is also that emotional component with all that information, it's all felt in the heart. All right, it's all those things that you know intuitively. All right, and it just makes sense and it sits, it sits well in your heart. All right, so as you continue working here, it's very important that you check in with your heart center and see how you feel about things. All right, because that's where all the answers lie. Because as we said before, you know, this has never been done. So you're writing uh, the book on how it is done. And uh, how do you get that information? Well, we can give you some of it, but most of it is going to be through practical experience. But while we give you some examples of things that can happen or how to work, you've got to translate it through your physical body and what's appropriate. All right? So we hope that makes sense to you all. While we can tell you that certain healing modalities are best, uh, you've got to tweak them according to how you're feeling with it, how you're working with it. You know, before you had a lot of ritual, all right? You had a lot of your mystery schools, you had a lot of your ritualistic behavior, which would up your frequency to a particular level so that you could then reach beyond and connect with your higher consciousness. But we tell you that uh, as the frequency of the planet has risen, all of that ritualistic behavior that you would have to do in the past to raise your frequency, you're already starting above it. All right? So if you think of it as a bit as climbing a scaffolding, now it's time to jump off. All right? You're far beyond it. You can't climb any higher because you're starting there already. And while you have healing modalities that in the past served you well in Atlantis and in Lemuria and healing modalities from other star systems, we will tell you that you are going to develop new ones because none of them are quite appropriate for what's going on right now. All right, because as we said, it has never been done before. So as some of you are going to start to transit into the fourth dimension, you're going to learn how to work with the energy when you're there and then you're going to start to bring that wisdom back, all right? Because you will rematerialize your body and uh, share these new healing modalities. So you've got lots of new modalities that are going to start to surface. So while you know some of these modalities like Reiki and Qigong and Sakim are wonderful modalities, Diksha, they are very um, third dimensional, all right? They are very connected to the planet. And they are very nice to get people started, but you're going to find that the pace is going to pick up and you've really got to do some surgical clearing. All right, you've got to be very specific in, in getting to the root of the issue and getting it cleared. And these are more of a wash of energy. All right, and some of these new modalities you're going to start bringing in and you're going to um, find that, you know, there really is no certification, all right? So don't be afraid to try something uh, because, you know, what is certification anyway? Where is that coming from? So if it resonates with you, go for it. All right? Listen to your intuition and how you're being guided. And we always say, you know, whether it's your intuition or your imagination, what is it really? All right? It's your connection to your higher consciousness. So uh, allow yourself to experiment with some of that and how you feel drawn to work with energy. All right? We will tell you that there are two things that it is very important for humans to increase, and one is, is water, and the other is oxygen. So however you choose to do this is you know, certainly up to you, but we would recommend utilizing some sort of breathing technique, right? whether it's meditation or whether it's rebirthing or you know, uh, one of the other myriad uh, breathing techniques, because what happens with oxygen, when you get it into your body, it not only works on the physical, but it works on the energetic. 
Right, so the more oxygen you're getting in, it's stirring everything up in your energetic field. And uh, the more you stir that and mix it up, the more you are able to bring issues to the surface of your consciousness and process them out. And as we said before, the energetic template, the emotional body, uh, creates the physical body. So every illness begins in the emotional template without exception. All right? Every illness is caused from a lower frequency thought. Let us say that again. Every illness without exception is caused from a lower frequency thought. Now, it could be a um, birth defect, but we tell you that's because you were brought in with you a resonant thought from another lifetime. All right? And sometimes that's created karmically. But the human body has an amazing ability to clear uh, itself out and to regenerate. All right? It was designed to live hundreds and hundreds of years, not uh, 40, 50, or 60. All right? And what is happening is that these lower frequencies are getting trapped in your body, which push you through a death cycle. All right? Because uh, when you get to a very low frequency, the body can't regenerate itself, and so you have to reincarnate. But we tell you, this time, you're clearing everything out and you're taking your body with you. You're not dying. All right? Very important for you to know and to understand. Because the body has a natural ability to heal itself. You have the ability to heal yourself in an instant if you can change the thought form. But if your belief system tells you that it can't be done overnight, then it can't. If you believe it will take a month, then it will take a month. If you believe it will take several years, then it will take several years. Whatever programs are running, whatever software is running, that's how your hardware will be designed. All right? So if you can get to those issues, you can see what those issues are. If you're paying attention to what's going on in your physical reality, what situations are being presented, and you're listening to the cues, you can see exactly what the issues are and you can clear them. All right? So if you're thinking about the things that you want to create and you're not getting back your order, it's because you're no longer standing on that rooftop. All right? So what thoughts took you down a couple floors? All right? And all you have to ask is uh, the thought that created that was and just subconscious is going to tell you. It may feel a bit silly to you at first or it may not be rational, but emotions aren't rational. Emotions are emotions, all right? They don't have to be rational. Um, and some, some things are set up at birth. You know, you choose your parents to create obstacles for yourself, all right? They're creating patterns and limitations so that you learn how to work through them. That's part of, you know, how you set up this lifetime. And then, you know, what you don't clear from your parents, you take with you and you create the, the same in the adult relationships so that you can clear it, all right? So your parents are the generators of all of those things that you need to clear. All right? And for those of you who have children, you are creating those obstacles for your children. It's not that you're creating a mess for them. That's what they desired when they incarnated, and that's why they have chosen you. All right? And uh, sometimes you're bringing with you things from other lifetimes. But those other lifetimes are in in resonant frequency with things that are going on in this lifetime and that's why you start to have flashes of other lifetimes so that those can be cleared, so those can be recognized. All right? So, um, your body has the ability to regenerate itself. And if you think of a cell, all right, and it's resonating at a higher frequency, it moves through time and space at a different rate than one that is uh, resonating at a lower frequency. All right, higher frequencies do not move at the same rate as lower ones. So while the rest of you is regenerating, it appears that the lower frequency cells are degenerating when in fact they're not degenerating, they're just not regenerating as quickly as the rest of you. All right, so if you can simply think of your body as still regenerating as opposed to falling apart, it creates a very different result for you, all right? It goes back to those laws of attraction and what you're focusing on. If you're thinking you're falling apart, then you're falling apart. If you're thinking that you're, all those little cells are working hard to regenerate, some a little faster than others, and you want to speed those others up, it creates a very different result in your body, all right? So, um, 
We will go ahead and wrap it up for today, dears. We've run out of time. Uh, but, you know, we've gone off on some tangents and we've made our way round full circle again. Uh, and we've given you a lot to process, a lot to uh, ponder and, and uh, think about. But more than thinking about uh, what we have presented to you, uh, we challenge you to take note of how you're feeling within your body. Because it is through your heart center and uh, through your emotional body that you're going to start processing information. You know, the intellect is a very third dimensional filter and you will not be able to hold the higher energy in the mind. And uh, you're only going to be able to hold it in your heart. So we challenge you to try and perceive your reality through your heart center. So if you need assistance, feel free to call on us at any time. You don't need an intermediary. You don't need Wendy to channel for you. All you have to do is ask for assistance, and we will do our best to provide it. All right? So um, until that time, we will be watching and waiting and sending many well wishes, dears. Yes, hello, dears. Uh, we're very happy to have you.